I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. Last time, we built a test rig that shows on an oscilloscope the voltage on a diode or transistor, together with the current through it. It works over a range of about 100 nanoamps to 10 milliamps, five orders of magnitude. When I use it on a diode, I see the characteristic hockey stick shape of the curve at each range of currents. What I really want to show is current versus voltage over that entire five decade range. I thought I might be able simply to gather a scope trace for each of the current ranges, load them all in a spreadsheet simultaneously, and plot the curve. But things got ugly. I should have guessed from what the XY plot on the scope looked like. It's fuzzy. The recorded signals have a tremendous amount of noise, quantization error, and jitter. It also shows spurious data from the small delay that it takes for the measured current to drop as the drive voltage gets reset. Looking at the captured data in a spreadsheet is no better. The signal wanders all over the place. Asking to put it on semi-log coordinates, which is how I want to display it eventually, makes it look even worse. I think I need to try accumulating a whole bunch of traces so as to average out all that hash. I started doing that by saving them on the scope, and discovered that I was starting to go crazy with trying to enter the file names by spinning and pressing an encoder knob. I need to do that for a whole bunch of traces, for multiple current ranges and multiple types of device. I need some automation. Before I start on automation, I have to get the computer and scope talking to one another. For me, the simplest thing that could possibly work was to use an Ethernet connection. The scope has a USB port, but I couldn't for the life of me find the software that communicates with it. I've seen several demos on YouTube and discussion on the online forums, but I've not found a download link. If you know how to do it for a Rigol 1054Z, please let me know in the comments. Right now my benchtop computer is on Wi-Fi, so I was able to use its Ethernet port as a second network adapter. With only the two nodes on the network segment, there's no need for a switch. I simply ran a cable directly between the computer and the scope. I turned off DHCP on the computer's Ethernet port and gave it an IP address in NetMask distinct from anything on my home network. I did the same thing on the scope. Setting up this stuff on the scope involves a lot of twisting and pressing the selector knob. I found myself wishing for a keyboard. I found a Python package that claims to talk to the Rigol scope. The PIP program even found it and installed it successfully, so let's give it a try. Well, it appears to be talking to the scope. Next question is whether I can capture waveforms. Sure enough, the waveforms appear to match what I'm seeing on the scope screen. Future Kevin here. I forgot to say anything as I was typing, but I'm asking PyPlot to show an XY graph of current versus voltage.
and they've got exactly the same problems as the waveforms that I saved on the USB device. Well, that's what we're here to fix. Let's take a look at the flow of the software. It's really hard to present programming without being horribly boring, but let me give it a go. I'll just give a quick walkthrough so that you have a place to start. You can fill in the details if you download the code from the project GitHub. At the outermost level, we're going to want to set up the scope, collect a package of data for each value of the current sense resistor, then analyze the data, save the results, and display our graph. So what does it mean to collect a bunch of data? I will get the smallest quantization error if I set up the scope so that the trace I want to analyze fills as much of the screen as possible. So I begin by setting the vertical and horizontal scales. Then it's a matter of another loop, repeated once for each replicate. Collect one waveform, filter out only the rising portion of the current, and accumulate the voltage and current points. Okay, so we ha now have more things to plunge into. Setting the vertical range means first setting the scope vertical and horizontal ranges that are wide enough that we're sure that any trace that we generate will fit. We then collect a waveform at that range and measure the min and max voltage that we saw. The rest of the code is just some ugly details that pick volts per division and offset to make everything fit. If I run a little program that does just this part, you can see it set the generous values, then zoom in on the vertical. A single capture then shows the trace framed nicely on the vertical axis. Oh yeah, I glossed over a few things. There's a little procedure to stop the scope and wait for it to actually stop. I found that it can take a short while after sending the command to stop it before it's good to go, and I get weird results if I continue too soon. I also broke out a procedure to set the safe wide ranges for, to allow capturing that initial waveform. That's just sending the numbers to the scope for scale and offset on the time base and the two vertical channels. And there's a procedure to run the scope for a short while, stop it again, and grab the most recent waveform. I'd like to do this with a single trigger, but I haven't made it work. When I run it full up, the scope starts giving input invalid errors and eventually stops responding to commands. I can track that problem down another time. Setting the time base scale in offset is only a little more complicated. It grabs a waveform with the correctly scaled voltage range and looks for two reset points, which the code defines as places where the voltage drops from above three quarters of the range to below one quarter of the range. It finds the time between these points and sets the time base to fit that duration on the screen. Again, we can run this part all by itself and see how it grabs a trace and rescales it. The next sweep is scaled correctly. Since we've already seen the procedure that collects the actual data, that's pretty much all there is to the data collection. When I run the whole program, you can see the scope merrily doing its thing, capturing a waveform, and then pausing to transfer the data to the computer. There's a bunch of code that manages the details of the graph. It builds a 2D histogram of the data points and displays it. It also fits a line to the plot, draws the line, and displays the equation of the line. When we look at that plot, we see that the points actually do lie nearly on that straight line. That's going to turn out to be important, but I don't want to spoil the next episode. This is exactly the type of result I want. So now I have a program that will gather the current versus voltage curve for a device 
and I don't have a whole painful process of shoveling the data manually. Next time, I'll run the curves for a few devices, and we'll look at what the results mean. Moving forward, what we learn will be a huge jump in our understanding of transistors. It will let us unlock a whole new set of transistor circuits. Current mirrors, differential amplifiers, logarithmic converters, variable gain amplifiers, and so on. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye.